dance. Let's go to this. What happened? Tony. I think he came up really fast. Okay, let's get him on some O2. Right. I think he needs some oxygen. The diving injuries addressed in this program are collectively referred to as decompression illness. Decompression illness, DCI, occurs either because of lung overexpansion injury or bubble formation within blood vessels and tissues secondary to an excess of inert gas absorption. In each case, the end result is both local and systemic inflammation and tissue hypoxia. As DCS and AGE can be difficult to differentiate, it is fortunate that the initial first aid is the same for both conditions. It is for this reason that diving medicine experts refer to these collectively as DCI. Decompression sickness, or the bends, is the result of bubbles that form and grow in the bloodstream or tissues during or after ascent because excess nitrogen or other inert gas is not sufficiently eliminated. These bubbles can distort or tear tissue, reduce or stop blood flow, and activate blood clotting, causing surrounding body tissues to become hypoxic. Arterial gas embolism, or AGE, may occur as a result of lung overpressurization during ascent while breathing compressed air or other gas mixtures like enriched air nitrox. Typically, this occurs as a result of the diver holding his breath during ascent. The gas is then introduced into the arterial system following lung tissue rupture in the form of bubbles. As the arteries get smaller, eventually the gas bubble forms an obstruction. If the bubble passes directly to the brain, it can cause rapid and dramatic symptoms. DCI has a broad range of presentations, many of which are similar to other illnesses and injuries like muscle or joint pain from a sports-related injury or chest pain and difficulty breathing from a heart attack. Decompression illness has no definitive presentation or laboratory test to confirm its presence and it may involve any area of the body. Hey, are you sure you're okay? No, yeah, I'm fine. Just waiting. Signs and symptoms are often vague and can go unrecognized by the diver, causing them to be dismissed as insignificant or not dive-related. Whenever you have a recent history of diving and one or more of these symptoms, you should seek medical attention. Pain is commonly associated with neurological symptoms. It has been characterized as a dull, boring or aching sensation in or around a joint or muscle. It may begin gradually and build in intensity or be so mild that it is disregarded. Numbness and parathesia are commonly characterized as a pins and needles sensation. These symptoms may also present as abnormal feelings, decreased or lost sensation, or hypersensitivity. Constitutional symptoms are generalized symptoms that do not impact a particular part of the body, but include extreme fatigue, general malaise, and nausea. Other signs and symptoms of DCI, difficulty with balance and equilibrium, muscular weakness, skin rash or localized swelling, altered mental status or confusion, difficulty urinating, blurred vision, difficulty breathing, Symptoms may not appear all at once, but rather may appear at various times following a dive and may range from just after a dive to as much as 24 hours later. Most symptoms will occur in the first two hours following a dive and the more serious the symptoms, the quicker the onset. An ascent to altitude, as when flying in an aircraft or driving through mountains, may also precipitate symptom onset. Once a diver is injured, it's important to call for assistance. 
Call Dan if you're not sure what to do. If you suspect you or your buddy are injured, Dan can assist you in locating a health care provider at the nearest available medical facility for evaluation. Mainly just on my right shoulder, I feel it all up and down. All right, well, we should call Dan. I think we should. Okay. If necessary, you may receive a referral to a hyperbaric or recompression chamber for definitive treatment. Right shoulder pain after a dive. Many injured divers delay seeking medical evaluation and assistance because warning signs of DCI can be subtle and go unnoticed. Some divers don't seek help because they're in remote locations, feel their symptoms aren't serious enough, or are concerned about the expense of evacuation and treatment. Dan suggests that every diver carry dive accident insurance. The cost of treatment can be very high and is often not covered in personal health care plans. The longer you delay evaluation and treatment for a diving injury, the lower the chances are of effective treatment and complete symptom resolution. Also, if injured while diving, you should not return to diving until all of your symptoms have cleared and you've received approval from a physician. Remember, symptom recognition is the first step in managing a scuba diving injury. As a DAN oxygen provider, it's important to know the symptoms and be prepared to respond with oxygen in the unlikely event of a diving injury. No, no, it's fine. I'll tell you what, just breathe normal. The benefits of providing oxygen to an injured diver are substantial. Anytime you suspect a dive-related injury, provide the injured diver with oxygen. The use of oxygen first aid increases the chance of complete symptom resolution leading up to hyperbaric treatment. Oxygen first aid may reduce bubble size and facilitate the elimination of nitrogen by creating a pressure gradient where nitrogen is reabsorbed from the bubble and eventually exhaled from the lungs. The higher the concentration of oxygen inhaled, the faster the nitrogen is eliminated. That's why Dan recommends 100% oxygen for injured divers. Oxygen first aid may also oxygenate hypoxic tissues, reduce tissue swelling, reduce symptom severity, speed symptom resolution, and ease breathing. Oxygen is the key supporting element of life. It's a colorless, odorless, and tasteless gas and makes up 21% of the atmosphere. Pure oxygen can be breathed alone and is commonly used for medical purposes. While there are many grades of compressed oxygen available, three common grades are aviator grade, medical grade, and industrial grade. Use only medical or higher grade oxygen. Industrial grade oxygen is not suitable for breathing. One of the concerns about breathing oxygen at elevated partial pressures is central nervous system toxicity. Fortunately, this is not seen when oxygen is used at sea level and only occurs when breathed under pressure. Pulmonary, or lung toxicity, can occur when breathing high concentrations of oxygen for an extended period, but this is not a serious concern for the DAN oxygen provider.